Hello folks and welcome to the channel. Now the Chiggy TR100 was released back in July 2024 and has basically flown under the radar whilst Chiggy's AIO 5 and 6 navigation units have basked in all the glory. So what exactly is this cube looking device? Well, it's a very clever three in one device. Using its two USB ports, it allows you to take power from your bike's battery for charging your gadgets. And it also allows you to reverse charge to put power back into the battery, either as a maintenance charger or for emergency power if your battery has dropped below the voltage needed to start the engine. If required, it can supply up to 100 watts of power so you can charge your laptop computer if needed. It's a powerful little sucker, but before we dive into it, let's roll the intro. Welcome back. First off, Chiggy and UK supplier Nippy Normans have both supplied me with the TR100 free of charge for me to review and test. Now I'm gonna put links in the description down below, so go and check them out. And depending on where you buy the TR100 from on the internet, it's gonna cost you between 70 and 100 pounds. Let's keep it simple, I like simple. The TR100 charging hub consists of the following components. First up then we have the TR100 module. This is the core unit of the charging hub featuring dual USB ports, namely USB-A and USB-C. You can charge or power gadgets like mobile phones, action cameras, GPS units, and it will even charge high power devices like laptop computers using its USB-C port, which can produce 100 watts of power if you use a compatible cable. The top port is USB-A and can provide 24 watts of power. The toggle button on top has three functions. Firstly, it allows you to power your gadgets or accessories. Secondly, it allows you to put power back into the bike's battery. And then thirdly, it allows you to select the type of battery that your bike has. And the options are lead acid, AGM or lithium batteries. It's constructed of aluminium and is very well made. And the two rubber port covers are ribbed for a nice snug fit. It also has a status light to let you know what is going on. And then finally, it has an IP rating of 66, which means it will withstand a pressure washer. So rain is not going to be an issue. In fact, everything is rated to a level of IP66, so water and dust will not cause a problem. Then we have the power module. This component handles the power conversion and management for both charging devices and for charging the motorcycle battery. And then there's the battery connectors. These connect the TR100 directly to your motorcycle's 12 volt battery, allowing it to charge the battery or draw power from it to charge your accessories and it comes with a 10 amp inline fuse. And then the other bits and pieces you're gonna get with the TR100 are gonna be a mounting base, two 3M sticky pads, some chiggy ties, and a small fold-out instruction leaflet. At the time of recording this, Chiggy are giving away two free charging cables with the TR100. Chiggy sent me two cables. One was the 100 watt USB-C to USB-C with a waterproof cap, that retails at approximately 17 pounds. And the other cable was a USB-C to lightning connector for my iPhone, again with a waterproof cap. If these cables aren't the free cables, then I'll put something in the description down below. The TR100 is a complete unit and the components don't unplug. It measures approximately 2.42 meters. So cable management and routing may need some consideration during the install. Having installed it already on my BMW R1250GS, I would say that there's nothing complicated about the installation and time-wise, it's gonna take you about 30 minutes from start to finish. Now, the TR100 gives you, with that 100 watt of power output from the USB-C port, the ability to charge high power devices such as laptop computers or drones. So if that's what you would consider doing, then you could mount the TR100 module to the rear of your bike and those high power devices will be getting charged as you ride along, possibly in a roll bag or your top box. 
Most folks no doubt will mount it on the handlebars, but you do have choices depending on what you're going to be charging. Now, I mounted mine on the handlebars, well, actually on my mirror stem using the supplied mounting base. In relation to the power module, Chiggy do actually say that it needs to be kept away from heat sources, something to bear in mind when it comes to installing all of this. Now, on some YouTube videos that I've seen, people on the GSs have just installed this under the seat, but there is an ECU under there which does get warm. It might not be warm enough to have any effect on this, but I didn't want to take any chances. Clearly, you don't want to mount this next to the engine because that is very much a heat source. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to mount this on the outside of the bike because it may get warm and I didn't want anything untoward happening with it. So I mounted it on the outside of the bike, on the right hand side, basically between the outside of the bike and the inside of my right thigh. But you do as you see fit. Let's take the bike outside and I'll show you how I mounted it onto my R1250 GS together with some photographs. But obviously you may find a different way to mount it onto your GS. Every bike is different, but just make sure you're very careful when it comes to routing of the cables to avoid any pinching or snagging. Right, let's take the GS outside and I'll show you my final installation. The TR100 module was mounted on the mounting base, an angle of about 45 degrees. Now my BMW mirror wouldn't allow me to mount it over the reservoir cover. It's a nice neat installation with the cables following the BMW's cable routing. And I simply tucked the cable behind the tank side cover. Where it then comes out and then into the power module and then back up again under the seat and then along and down into the bike's battery. For me, on the BMW, this is the best install method, in my opinion. As I said, the module is at 45 degrees, so it doesn't snag on the tank bag when the USB cables are plugged in. Always check for free movement from side to side. Keeping it simple, remove the seat, then the tank cover, remove the side cover screws, and the seat tray screw. Battery cover comes off next. If you have these optional infill panels, undo the rubber tie. And this is the last panel that has to be removed. I've got the option 719 mirrors, so the right mirror gets removed. And then run the TR100 module up through the forks. Get the mounting base and attach it to the mirror stem. If you've got some rubbing alcohol, give the mounting base and the TR100 module a clean. Stick the 3M pad to the module and then secure to the mounting base. Once you've got the best angle, 45 degrees actually worked for me as it avoided hitting my tank bag on full lock. Then tighten the mirror. Then secure the module's cable to the existing bike's wiring using the OEM rubber ties. Feed the cable under the tank side cover beneath the screw holes, ensuring that the cover is able to sit properly. Go under the last screw hole and tuck it under the rubber seat support and then pop the screws back in the tank side cover. Take the power module and feed the wires under the frame rail. As I've got the optional infill panels, I just had to lightly force the module under here. Feed the battery terminal connectors behind the frame rail together with the fuse holder and removing the screw earlier makes it easier to feed it through as you can actually move the seat tray. Feed the cable through and tuck it into the corner where there is no pressure on it. And it should look something like this. Pop the screw back in. A zip tie makes feeding these connectors much easier. Feed the connectors like this with a bit of a wiggle if needed. Once through, attach it to the battery terminals and secure so it's all nice, neat and tidy. Covers go back on. Use zip ties to keep all the cables nice and tidy. Clean the area where the power module will go with some rubbing alcohol and then secure the power module with the other 3M pad. My mistake, I actually stuck the 3M tape onto the power module's warning sticker that actually came away, so just stick the 3M tape onto the non-sticker side of the power module. I didn't like the full sticker, so cut the warning triangle out and then reattached it, as you can see here. So it now looks like this. The TR100 is very easy to use. It has one button on the top, and we'll call that the toggle button. There is no on or off button. If the status light is not on, that means it's in standby mode, and Chiggy say that it will take about three years to drain the battery which is connected directly to the TR100. 
If it's inactive for a period of 30 seconds, then it goes into standby mode and the light goes out. It's a two-way charger, so not only can we take power out for charging your gadgets, but we can put power back into the battery for charging it and maintaining it like a trickle charger does. It has numerous protection circuits, ensuring safe and optimal charging at all times. To take power out or put power back into the battery for charging purposes, then you have to change the charging mode, and you do this simply by pressing the toggle button on the top. The status light will show green for charging your gadgets and blue for charging your battery. Very simple to remember, green for gadgets, blue for battery. It's important to tell the TL100 your battery type so it can use the correct charging program and algorithm. So with the blue light display, you can then press the toggle button for two seconds and then this will allow you to scroll through the three types of battery that you can select. The status light will show blue for a normal lead acid battery. It will show purple for an AGM battery, which is what I have on my BMW. And if you have a lithium ion battery, it will show an orange status light. Once you've selected the correct battery type for your bike, it will automatically save it. Charging an external device is very simple. Just press the toggle button until the status light shows green. Remember, green for gadget. If you're using the top USB port, that's USB-A, well, that can supply 24 watts normally, but it can actually supply a maximum wattage of 27 watts. If you have an iPhone, then this port does not use the fast charge language that the iPhone needs, i.e. PD, power delivery. So it would just be a normal charge if you've got an iPhone plugged into the top port. But if you've got an Android phone, then it does talk the fast charge language, i.e. the QC protocol, quick charge protocol. You get a slow flashing green light, which means the device is being charged. And if the port is able to fast charge your device, then the green light will be flashing quickly. The bottom USB-C port will supply up to a maximum of 100 watts and speaks fast charge language, i.e. PD, power delivery for Apple devices and also Android devices. So you will be able to charge your Apple devices with the bottom port. So with this port, you're able to charge high powered devices. So you can charge an Apple MacBook or an Apple iPad. For fast charging, you're gonna need a cable which is compatible as it needs to be able to handle the power. Basically, the TR100 will talk to the device and agree how much power it can safely supply and whether it can fast charge it or not. If there is any issue, then the TR100 will supply a suitable lower but safe charge. You'll get a slow flashing green status light to say it's charging and a fast flashing green light for when it's able to fast charge the device. And that's how easy it is to charge with the TR100. For battery maintenance or emergency charging, obviously you have to make sure that you have selected the correct battery type that your bike has. Here I'm using an Anker multi-port fast charger and you can actually plug the cable into either port. The TR100 can be used as a normal battery tender to maintain your battery in tip-top condition. And I'm using Chiggy's 100 watt cable, which will allow fast charging in the bottom port. You get a slow flashing blue status light showing it's in battery charging mode. When it's solid, it means the battery is fully charged. Now, if you need to fast charge the battery, simply press the toggle button and then the blue status light flashes quickly, meaning it's in fast charging mode. If your power supply doesn't have enough power, then the TR100 will not allow you to do fast charging. You'll just get a normal charge. Remember, not all USB cables are equal. So if you find that you have a sufficiently powerful charging device, but you're not getting fast charging, then it may actually be the cable. So you might want to have a look at the Chiggy cables. You can also use a power bank to charge your battery, but if you find that your bike won't start, then you can use a 100 watt power bank and put it into fast charge mode on the TR100. And Chiggy say in about five minutes time, you should be able to start your bike. And if you have a long enough USB cable with you, you can simply get some power from a friend's bike if they have a USB port. 
That, folks, is the TR100 from Chiggy. Now, if you've got a bike with a battery that's difficult to get to and you have to remove panels, etc., to connect a jump pack to it, then consider this. I've got a jump pack and will still take that with me on my tours as a backup. But for ease of use as a battery maintainer, a gadget charger, and an emergency get you out of trouble charger, I think that the TR100 is a fabulous bit of kit and it is definitely staying on my BMW R1250 GS. And finally, just a big thank you to Nippy Normans here in the UK and Chiggy for supplying the TR100s. I'm gonna put links in the descriptions down below, so go and check their websites out for the latest deals. In the meantime, ride safe, comments down below, do all that YouTube stuff, and cheerio for now.